What's up guys, it's Blacken bringing you some more RA content today. Uh, we're going to take a break from shot casting just for a little bit, just to do some map making guides and uh, talk about the process of there. We're going to go in right here, map editor, we're going to make a new map. Uh, we're just going to make it temperate. 76 by 76, nope, 76 by 76. Size doesn't matter, that's right, that's what all the girls say. And uh, we're going to come in here, we're just going to name this test one, or test one there we go my name is blacken uh map visibility so if you ever want to make missions uh, you're going to want to check off lobby and check mission this will have it come up in the mission category for the single player this is going to be just a multiplayer map so we're just going to leave it as lobby for now a user i imagine if you have multiple users on your computer that's where this will go but i am not 100 percent sure on that one actually file name we're just going to name it the same thing as Test one, uh, what you want to do with file names is you don't want to have any spaces in them that will come into play with like the utility or anything like that. If you're trying to um, like resize the map through that or add uh, rules, check YAML, convert, or anything like that. If there's spaces here, it'll cause a problem. So you always want to either use dashes or some other else to denotate uh, separations of words. But test one will be fine. And then lastly, right here, you have the choice between uh, the ORA map, which is the, like the zipped version or the unpacked version. So the unpacked version will just make a, uh, like a folder and you can check out everything in. Uh, if you're going to be adding any custom rules like uh, like Raggle rules, ERCC, or maybe you just have custom assets and stuff like that, you're going to want to use unpacked. Uh, if you try to just directly import stuff into a zipped map, there's a good chance that it'll corrupt something and you just won't be able to use the map anymore. So. If you are going to do that, because sometimes, you know, you're just trying to do one thing, at least make a copy before you do. And then that way, if you screw up one, then uh, you have the backup. But unpacked is definitely the way to go. It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to uh, check rules and stuff, too, if like you're adjusting values like in for the naval balancing that I'm doing. Uh, if you leave it unpacked, you can just keep it open, test, save, and you don't have to have like the their object has been modified. You want to update it now and all that stuff that zip stuff has. So let's get into here. Uh, this is really just going to be talking about like the, the basic stuff, pretty much all the stuff over here. Um, I'll get into like the actual map making stuff later in the video. And honestly, this is probably going to be like a three or four or five part series. It's a, there's a lot that goes into map making and I didn't realize it when I started making this video, but just coming up and I was like, oh yeah, I got to talk about this, got to talk about that, so on and so forth. So these first values right here are the X, Y coordinates. And then the zero is going to be the Z coordinate. Since this is RA, there's no uh, height really, so it's just going to focus on these first two. Uh, these are really important just because like they help you find the center. So we went with a uh, 76, 76, which is I think center would be. You're going to see me struggle to do math. Right about there. That's probably wrong, but good way to check is just to do this. And I was just like one off in one direction. I'm just uh, denotating the middle of the map, and I fucked that up too. There you go. So that's that's the center of the map right here, uh, 38 and 39. Uh, if it's a single cell, obviously it'd just be one. But uh, this just helps you kind of split up the map in my head a little bit, uh, find it in the center. Super helpful for uh, symmetry when you know the X, Y values of the places, and you can kind of mirror stuff a little easier. Over that, we have grid. So grid just brings up this for you. Mixing is a little easier to contextualize, I think. Uh, I used to change the grid color to gray through YAML changes that you can do. But, um, you know, it's it's real, it's fine. I use it on and off a lot. You can turn it on and off with F1. And then F2 turns on uh, buildable. So with stuff like this, it's really helpful for roads. Uh, there's a lot of road pieces that are have debris on them that you can't build on. Like for instance, this one, I didn't know that this wasn't buildable at all. I always thought this one was the only one that was. So it's like, this is actually something that came out with this new release is actually really helpful. Um, just lets you contextualize like what pieces are not buildable. I know like these uh, diagonal pieces right here are actually very annoying a lot of the times because uh, they're right by where people want to place roads to ore. And so this little piece right here, or this little piece can get in the way and it's, it's actually super annoying. So it's just something to be careful of. And it's actually a, a great new tool that we have next to that. We have undo and redo control Z control Y. Uh, this is also, it's a really good tool. 
you make a quick mistake, you can just go back, just like that. Uh, this next one is the copy filters. So this is also pretty important for, like if you have money in that, which I forgot to talk about, money will show up right here, the total value. That's also great if you need a mirror, you can quickly just double check and make sure, yep, 7,400 is the same as 3,700 twice. Um, you need some actors out here too. So we'll just throw this and then we'll throw some burnt trees. Uh, so copy filters are great. If you just want to copy a train, you don't want to do any like the resources like that. Actually, I did the opposite. So just train like we would do this. And this would just copy like the roads and the water and stuff like that. Uh, if you just want resources, you know, and there's a bunch of like cliffs and stuff like that. Uh, really easy to just turn off that so it won't do cliffs, which is train. And then last you have actors. So if you just wanted like the uh, spawn and the trees like that, just uh, copy and paste like that. So this is really important to do once like the map's kind of like actually beautified and you got all your stuff on there. Um, not so super useful in the beginning, but that's okay. It, it definitely does come into play. Copy and paste, obviously this is your bread and butter. There is so much you can do with this. Uh, I mean, just using this to mark center is what I like I was doing earlier. Uh, you can use it to kind of quickly copy and paste order values, which I'll show later in the video, uh, pretty much anything you can do. Copy and paste is also really good for finding like the opposites of the other side. So like if I wanted to know where this ore spot would be over here, just go like this and I would know that it's right there at 2553. So it's like something that you can really quickly do to uh, do symmetry and stuff like that. And I'll go over that later in the video when I'm actually working on a map. So that's going to be it for now and we're going to come back with like some ideas behind the maps and we're going to get into some actual map making all right so the next thing we're going to get into is the three types of symmetrical maps you can have and there's technically there's only two there we'll get into that a little bit later we're going to ignore asymmetrical maps because those are really only good for missions and this is more of a competitive balanced uh, map making guide so we're going to use the letter f because f is for frizz and that's just going to help us visualize the symmetry the first type of map you can have is a map flipped over one axis. So if you want to flip over the X axis, it'd look like that, a backwards X. If you want to flip over the Y axis, you'd have an upside down F. And the second type of map that you can have is an X, Y flipped uh, map. And that's going to look like the upside down and backwards F. Uh, just to help visualize this, I'm going to bring up some old maps. This is Affinity Isle from the Dark Team Tournament I did a long time ago. And as you can see, it's just flipped over the Y axis. Everything on the northern side is the same as the southern side. Uh, same thing, this is Caustic Sands from the Dark Team Tournament did a while ago. This is just flipped on the X axis, X, X axis instead. God, it's hard to talk. And the next one, this is Malevolence from the current ladder. And as you can see, there's actually more than one way that you could flip this map, which is one of the strengths and we'll talk about it later. But it's just not simply flipped over one axis, you have to flip over both. Which brings us to the uh, other type of map you can have which is a 45 degree split map these maps are the hardest maps to make and the least common uh, simply because you have to rotate 45 degrees and then flip over the x y axis and there's no neat way to do that in the editor it's a lot of individual uh, placing of objects and everything so these maps have their own advantages too uh, here's orthos as you can see split right down the middle on that 45 degree axis uh, they have some really cool qualities with this and then the reason I kind of said there's only actually two maps is because as you can see now, as it slowly rotates over, this is really just flipped on a one axis map. Uh, it's just a little unique that you can't just do this in the editor as a one to one. You have to do some fancy stuff too. So let's talk about the pros and cons of these maps where maps that are mirrored over just the X or just the Y axis. Uh, you can see that they're extremely easy to create. Uh, I could probably make one of those maps in honestly 30 to 45 minutes, completely finished, flushed out with all the like the aesthetic features and everything on them. They're, they are super easy to create just because you are flipping over that one axis. Uh, they're also really good for close spawns. Um, you can have, there's a few maps that I've made where it's like you spawn on the bottom and it's kind of like a, you can kind of imagine like a U as the symmetry shape of it and you just kind of span one way and that's it. Uh, but they're really good for keeping those really close spawns. The cons on the other hand is you can't have long spawns at all and the medium spawns tend to play pretty bad. Uh, if you have long spawns and it's just flipped on one axis, then that means that you are on opposite ends of the map and it's going to be like a really long map and so it's just like almost worthless. You have so much of these uh, wasted maps just trying to get to the middle, uh, which also makes it a problem of the middle could be way too powerful on these maps. Uh, it's very common to put or or something to control in the middle, like the exact middle, 
and then once you have that like you have more than half the map uh, same thing with expanding in parallel i mean it's not terrible to expand parallel all the time you see it a lot in the xy flip maps too uh, the problem with that is is usually that's putting you closer to an opponent's base where on these type of maps you're always going to be expanding parallel and so you're never going to be closer to the base than you were at the start uh, this makes going to the middle often way too powerful as you can just close that distance cut it in half and then once you control more than half the middle you're always going to control more than half the middle so uh, the last kind of problem there is the rigid halves like you can't really have like these uh fancy like almost yin yang looking type maps that you can have in uh the other ones so maps that are x and y mirrored uh these maps are still pretty easy to create uh you can have multiple type halves as i showed with malevolence uh there's no one way to split the map depending on which way a player wants to go which can be really good and these maps also force confrontation since you're even though you're kind of expanding parallel you're always expanding towards an opponent's base most likely uh, and the, another really good thing about these maps is it's really good for flanks because uh, it's very easy to get lost and you don't have that clear uh, half like you do on the, some of the other type of maps uh, that does come with some downsides though you have lots of dead space on these type of maps that's just because like the bigger you make these maps the more like outside edges like um pink's mapped over there's a lot of dead space around the edges and it's kind of by design in that hours and it wasn't necessarily a con it's just uh, you have to be very careful you can look really empty if you have all this unused assets or new space uh another con is they don't scale very well uh this is more for like 2v2 3v3s and 4v4s uh you'll see it a lot like 4v4 maps well if you start in the corner and they're like kind of these uh xy flip maps it's just really long before there's actually any confrontation you can take like two or three expansions before you're actually fighting the opponent and then once you lose one of those or spots like it's just so hard to get back because your main base is so far away so that could be a very big con uh, true middle can be too powerful so that's like if you put or right in the middle or a lot of people i saw on some maps will they'll do like a, a comp center and a couple oils uh, like if you take that middle it's very hard to come back from or i know it was a big problem with like like the season nine maps uh the middle was just too powerful you'd sit up with your army there and then you could respond to any one direction from there uh and then the last thing is it kind of tends to have bad close spawns uh i think what is it shared hostility or something like that uh, where you can pretty much just base push right in the very beginning uh, it's very hard to have close maps like that that work without uh just kind of splitting the map into two and having like no real flanks or anything like that so it's definitely a sacrifice if you try to have close spawns on the map uh, for the 45 degree split maps uh they scale very well you can have a smaller map with a larger player area and i think this is why a lot of like the 3v3 and 4v maps that are popular tend to be uh these 45 degree split maps uh, they're great for close spawns like uh i think trapped is my go-to when i think of the 45 degree split maps that map is really small uh, but it kind of plays bigger and you can go straight to the main base or you can just play normally and uh the flanks are still good they're not as good for uh the xy mirrored but you can still have a lot of them like orthos there's definitely a lot of room to flank there uh orthos is actually kind of on the bigger map side too uh, problems with uh 45 degree split maps is they're the rigid just like they are with the x or y mirrored uh first the middle can be a problem so i mean it's the same thing with trapped like if you go to the side where that has the double uh or mine and then the single that you can kind of control like that does lead you to a better uh eco than the other way uh, you can kind of combat that like i did on trapped which is just to have more or on the bottom to kind of make up for it but you know it is a debate of should a map ever just have a distinct advantage that if you can hold you'll should in theory win uh i'm not so sure but that can be a problem to make uh first in the middle of a problem i know another map like overkill is the same type of deal where it's a 45 degree split map and i think if you control like that bottom half of that map uh it's a little bit too powerful uh as a result of that like you, you really have limited layouts of what things you can do uh, just because you aren't really having like that um yin yang type look uh, you're not going to be able to expand closer to one opponent than the other you're just going to have rigid halves and, and i've already kind of mentioned but hard to limit certain areas of being too powerful like the same for overkill uh it's common for a lot of maps just to have like the corners be too powerful because that's kind of where your the confrontation is pushing and if you don't do those right then once you take those areas then it's just kind of hard to come back from so you have to be very careful with that all right so we're almost there getting to see me actually make a map but first we have to talk about the rough draft. I think it's really helpful to have the idea going into a map before you even make it. Uh, for me, I just use paint. I know some people will like actually break out graphing paper and do it with their hand in real life or 
maybe they'll just use a graphing program or something like that. But as you can see, I use paint and it is ugly, but it works for me. Um, the pinks is, are going to be the spawns. Yeah, obviously the yellows or the, the black dots are kind of the ore mine just to kind of denotate how I want the ore mine split out. Uh, you got some white for capture tools in there and then obviously the brown is going to be close and stuff like that. So very, very simple, uh, very rudimentary, but it gets the job done for me. And I think that's where I'll leave this video. Uh, just all the setup and talking about maps and all that to even get into the map making itself. Uh, it did take me two hours, like I said before. So the next video is probably going to be longer. I'm definitely going to fast forward through a lot of it and just kind of highlight the key moments. Otherwise, it's just kind of going to be relaxing, I guess, if you wanted to watch me. Uh, spend two hours making a map but for now we'll call it here and i'll see y'all next time